It has been a difficult summer for Borussia Dortmund. After failing to secure the Bundesliga title on their final match day last season, they lost star player Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid. Edin Tantic is still the only selectable Bundesliga manager, and ambitions for the club remain the same. Getting out of a Champions League group with PSG, Milan, and Newcastle would be a massive accomplishment, and the Dortmund squad has some quality. Good news with goalkeeper Gregor Kobel extending his contract with the club until 2028, and despite getting on in age, Marco Royce and Mats Hummels continue to provide veteran leadership and stack solid performances so far this season. Considering all the money brought in from the Bellingham transfer, Dortmund have a surplus in their budget. I rate each of their player arrivals this summer, focusing heavily on Bundesliga proven talents, but I think they need more squad depth at right back, and I've identified two potential transfer targets. Ferdi Kadioglu is literally 70 rated at every outfield position. However, I think a right wing back or right mid role would be his best fit. However, the player I've decided on for this save is Yukinari Sugawara. We've seen Dortmund make a few transfers from the Eredivisie in recent years, specifically for Sebastian Allaire and Daniel Malin. But for Sugawara, you've got an incredible attacking minded player that needs a little bit of work on his defense, but his three goals and eight assists for Azet last season linked him with plenty of Bundesliga and Premier League clubs. I was personally surprised to see him stay in the Netherlands, but with three assists already this year, he should be on the move in the upcoming transfer windows. A 10 million fee is not bad considering all the potential interest in Shugawara, but his valuation right now is at 8.5 million. That should be on the rise quickly throughout this season. What I've learned from playing FC24 so far is that you want to loan out your younger players that don't yet have a great overall rating. That's exactly what we're going to do with two of our best prospects at the club. The Youth Academy has been pretty underwhelming at the start of each of my saves, and that is no different here. We've got three talents who have 90 plus potential, and the nationalities were actually pretty interesting because Dorman and have some Youth Academy links in Egypt as well as South America. We'll begin with a four-star, four-star scout who will stay in Germany for nine months searching for any type of player, but we'll add a five-star, five-star scout. He's headed to the United States and Dortmund, of course, over the years have had some great prospects from this country. Two of the recent ones that come to mind are Christian Pulisic and Gio Reyna. We've got room for one more scout, another five-star, five-star one from Serbia. He's headed to England, but just a few years ago, Jane Sancho was putting up incredible numbers with Dortmund. Our Bundesliga season set to begin at home against Köln. Here is the starting 11. Our tactical vision is set to Gagan pressing, and I've adjusted a few of our custom tactics to replicate what the club tends to use, and our coaching setup is pretty well distributed. We've achieved our attacking and goalkeeping goals, so we should be able to see good development in those areas. It's a 3-1 win in our season opener, and we start the season off with quite a few victories and not a bad outing in our Champions League group. Dortmund have played two matches so far, accumulating a single point. And with Newcastle currently topping the group in this save, they won't be an easy opponent. We're traveling away to St. James's Park for this one. Newcastle have plenty of great players, including a former Dortmund talent with Alexander Isak. Dortmund have won the Champions League one time during the 1997 season against Juventus. They're also runners-up in 2013 to one of their Bundesliga rivals, Bayern. We'll look to reach a Champions League final in this save. And of course, it had to be one of our veterans at the club to open up the scoring in this one. Only took eight minutes for Marco Royce to get into the box. One thing about these Dortmund tactics is that we get a lot of players forward. Pretty much anyone from the midfield up has permission and instructions to get into the box for crosses. So we should see goals pretty well distributed across all of our players. But defensively, we looked strong. Looking to get quickly on the counter attack, several chances going our way as we make a change in the 74th minute. It's Mukoko to be brought on for full crook. Tough choices for Dortmund at the striker position. I kind of understand why they brought in full crook considering the form he has been in for the German national team and also for Werder Bremen, but they've got other strikers at the club already like Mukoko and Allaire, so it's going to be tough to get minutes for each of them, but great header there from Nico Schlotterbeck. He's had a knack for scoring goals recently, a long range effort just a few days ago in the Bundesliga against Union Berlin. Really excited to see what kind of rating he can achieve in this save. But that's a crucial three points added to our Champions League group tally. We'll close out October with another victory in the league against Frankfurt, but a difficult fixture 
against Bayern. Already it looks to be just a few teams challenging for the Bundesliga title and since we've already been knocked out of the DFB Pokal, it means that we need to focus even more on our performance in the league and Champions League. You can talk for days about all the talent at Bayern. Quite realistic to see Manuel Neuer has been injured in this save, but it's predominantly Bayern's attack that I'm worried about. I think everyone that follows the Bundesliga looks forward to Der Klassiker. It has been one of the great rivalries in sport the last 10 seasons or so. Lately, it's gone in Bayern's favor, Dortmund always coming so close to maybe breaking that streak, and I don't think it came even closer than last season where Dortmund dropped points on the final match day, and Bayern, after what I can say as a Bayern fan was a very disappointing season, they still walked away with the league title. But now they've got Harry Kane, and he is already making his mark as both a goal scorer and assist maker, setting up Leroy Sané, who plays the ball in the middle to Limer, back to Kane, and eventually he will find Kingsley Coman to score the first goal of this match, taking 35 minutes. So we were holding pretty strong defensively, but once Bayern get one, they tend to follow it up. It's Jamal Musiala to find Sané, the German winger who likes to drift a little bit centrally, like he does here, will double their lead. We've got our work cut out for us in the second half, and that means we're going to make some changes to try to switch up tactics. Kareem Adeyemi, not the best start to the season, but we can look at his historical performances, and I don't think you can deny his potential. That change seemed to spark something for this Dortmund squad, as Daniel Malin will get on the end of this set piece. Really good tactic, as it was a flicked on header. I think that's Julian Brandt, and it's a uncontested effort on target for Malin. But this Bayern attack is just so difficult to stop. When you think you have one player covered, they find another source of goals. This time coming from the newly face scanned Jamal Musiala in FC 24. Harry Kane threw on goal in the 69th minute. He's going to go solo this time. He's already got assists at this point, but he will get a goal in his first Der Klassiker. Result of this match pretty much sealed, but we show some signs of life with Julian Brandt in the 85th minute. Pretty good effort to get the ball past the Bayern goalkeeper. That is not the result we wanted at home. We need to do a lot better if we want to challenge Bayern for the Bundesliga title. Seems like the loss against Bayern didn't impact us much as we win most of our fixtures in November and even pushing into December. We've got one Champions League fixture left to play against Milan and a lot of different scenarios could happen. A win though will put us through to the knockout stages of the Champions League and as we get into January we can check on results. The Bundesliga wise we sit third a single point behind Leipzig and a good 11 points behind Bayern for the top spot. Looks like it's going to be us and PSG to advance to the knockout stages with Newcastle dropping down to the Europa League. Our round of 16 matchup will be against Atletico Madrid with our starting 11 not looking too bad. A couple of morale issues at the striker spot. I think that stems from the lack of minutes that I was mentioning earlier. Nicholas Fulkrug leading the way with 12 goals. Mukoko, not bad considering only nine appearances. He has three goals to his name. Sebastian Aller has had a disappointing start to the season to say the least. 11 appearances, zero goals, and zero assists. But in the Champions League, we pull off a 1-1 draw away from home. Scoreless in regulation time of the Champions League, but in extra time, it goes to penalties and Atleti were victorious in that matter. With us now out of all cup competitions, the Bundesliga is that much more important. A big fixture to close out March against Bayern. We've managed to catch up to them in the standings, just six points behind them now. Fortunately, two late goals from Ben Sabani and Adeyemi give us the win against Bayern. With just a few fixtures left this season, we'll drop points against other top sides like Leverkusen and Leipzig. But all in all, we put in a pretty good effort to close out our Bundesliga campaign. It was enough to see a second place finish. Bayern finished seven points clear of us for that number one spot. Leverkusen and Leipzig will be joining us in the Champions League next season. Wolfsburg and Bremen qualifying for European competitions next year. Mid-table goes pretty much as expected. Stuttgart with a pretty heavy drop-off from the halfway mark. But Union Berlin underperforming and will need to compete in the promotion playoffs where they risk joining Heidenheim and Darmstadt 
in Bundesliga 2. Speaking of which, it's Hertha Berlin and St. Pauli that see promotion. Hamburg competing against Union Berlin in the relegation playoffs, but the Bundesliga side will keep their spot next year. I will be sporadically checking on our second team all the way down in the Dritte Liga. They saw a 16th place finish. Bayern were Pokal winners against Wolfsburg in the final. Manchester City defeating Sevilla in the UEFA Super Cup. Arsenal winning the Champions League against Bayern. Leverkusen were Europa League winners and it's Fenerbahce defeat Rennes in the Conference League final. Fulkrug was our top goal scorer at the club, 22 from 35 appearances, ranking him as the seventh best goal scorer in the Bundesliga. Harry Kane equal on goals with Kaminski from Wolfsburg. Assists were pretty well distributed across all of our players, but Julian Brandt had the most at the club, six from 42. Actually ranked him as the fifth best in the Bundesliga. And it's former Dortmund talent Mario Goetze that shares the top spot with Harry Kane. Surprisingly, Kobel was the only goalkeeper to feature in the top 15 that featured in every single Bundesliga match. But he is the highest valued player at the club. A plus three in his rating to hit the 90s mark. Adiemi not far behind. Up plus six to an 86 overall. And Mukoko with some good growth this season. Up plus three into the 80s for his rating. I want to update you on some of our loaned out players like Bino Gittens, up plus three during a Wolfsburg loan spell to a 74 rating. Morai, up plus two to a 73 overall. Duranville spent the season on loan at Stuttgart, going up plus five in his overall to a 71. And of course, we've got some Youth Academy players to update you on. Oliver Graf is a 65 rated right winger from Germany. He's got 83 to 93 potential. Mason Wright, our talent from the United States, 64 rated left winger with 74 to 88 potential. And finally, Declan Collins, a 60 rated talent from England. He's left winger, 86 to 92 potential. We'll start season two with a storyline that is familiar with Dortmund in recent years. We're challenging for the league title, but not yet winning trophies. It will be crucial for us to improve upon this 42 manager rating, and brand exposure is a critical objective. Within three seasons, we need to sign four of the best players in the world who are 82 rated or more. Domestically, we need to win the Pokal, win the Bundesliga, and for the Champions League, we need to reach the final. Lofty expectations, but we've got a big transfer budget to work with, 162 million. And of course, we are going to be receiving offers for several players, but I was very pleased to see that Barcelona wanted Allaire's signature. Seems like Barca liked those players with connection to Dortmund as Allaire joins for 50 million. Bayern have no chill when it comes to submitting offers for our players. Mecha just joined the club and already Bayern submitting a 35 million offer for him. Mukoko is going to be getting an improved squad role at Dortmund, so I also rejected the Bayern offer here. I want to make a statement with our first summer signing, and it will be a defender in Denzel Dumfries. He is in the form of his life right now with Inter and with the Netherlands on the international level. He's a big time player, and I think right now there are few better right wing backs in the world. With that said, his contract was running out at the end of the season, so we were able to bring him in for just 25 million. It's less than his 27.5 million valuation. And by the end of the calendar year, I think it's fair to say he's gonna have more than 82 rating. We're sticking with the theme of defensive upgrades with our next signing, Armel Belakochup. If you've been playing career mode or football manager the last few years, you'll know this guy. He is an iconic signing. What stands out to me about him is the five-star weak foot, which makes him a very versatile center back. Southampton took note of his potential by signing him last summer. Unfortunately, with them getting relegated, it meant that he would be on the move elsewhere. Plenty of Bundesliga clubs, including Dortmund, were interested in him joining on a loan basis, but he ultimately decided to join PSV, and they're building a pretty great squad in career mode. It's going to be a 15 million fee to complete the Bella Kochup signing, Pretty good for squad depth, and with him being only 22 years old, there's a good chance he could hit the 80s in his overall within the next season or two. I think you get the theme for this summer. We keep on focusing on signing players for the future, and our next one is a talent of the Bundesliga with Arna Engels. We already have a box-to-box -box midfielder with Mecha, but I want to have a player that can fill in for squad rotation as needed. We've got a lot of different competitions this year, and you never know what might happen with injuries. 
He's also versatile enough to feature as a fullback, which is where he's playing for Augsburg right now. But I think his best role is in the midfield, and that is where he got his four Bundesliga assists from just 18 appearances last season. 12.5 million was the finalized fee for Engels. A little bit lower on the rating was 74, but he is showing great potential, and I'm going to do my best to help him fulfill that. It'll be another season of Youth Academy scouting, staying in Germany, looking for any type of player this season. Our next network is in Poland, where we search for a right back. I would consider Lukas Piszczek to be a Dortmund legend. He helped the club lift two Bundesliga titles in consecutive seasons. Our final network is in Brazil. There had been plenty of talents for this country for Dortmund, but Dede racked up nearly 400 appearances for the club from the left back position. How about this two matches against Bayern to begin our season? The first one will be in the German Super Cup. It's a new competition for us. And I think our starting 11, despite the morale issues, is capable of dethroning Bayern. We know this Bayern team well. It seems like they're signing more and more players from the Premier League with Andrew Robertson and John Stones joining the club. I'm sure they've got ambitions to make up for their loss in the Champions League final last season. Fans traveling from all over the country to the Hanover 96 Stadium. A good ground that I think should make for a full attendance. That's Mecha that starts things off. Neuer back in action for Bayern and making a stop within the first few minutes. But unlike the previous match we played against Bayern, momentum going in our favor. That's going to help with a 10th minute red card for Leimer. Not what they want to see. And it was a poor tackle on Adiyemi. Shows the impact that he can make in the squad. I think it's fair to say that he is an untouchable player in our starting 11 now. He just makes such an impact with his dribbling ability, and clearly he's got some good finishing stats as well, giving us the early lead in the 16th minute. But one thing about Bayern is that they know how to answer back. They've got so many good attacking options, and Kingsley Coleman is one of them. Played into space and did well to get the shot past Kobel. But it's Malin who plays through Dumfries, our new signing already making his mark from the right wing back position. And it's Adeyemi who is in form for us. That's a brace within the first half and he'll be looking for his hat trick in the next 45 minutes. Wukoko being brought on for full crew because we are going for a slightly faster play style with the players around him. Leroy Sané dribbling by a few of our defenders, a really good solo goal there to tie things up once again in the 56 minutes. But we're closing in towards the end of this one, 73rd minute, and it's a cross lofted in. Kim Min Jae able to clear it out initially, but Julian Brandt, what a header to find the back of the net. You remember last season when he set up Mullen off the set piece, it seems like he's mastered this area of his game, and that will give us a crucial lead, and it was enough for us to see out this match. Emre Chan, now the Dortmund captain with Marco Royce and Mats Hummels getting fewer and fewer minutes. I'm happy to be lifting our first trophy of the rebuild so far, but there are other competitions that we want to win. We're trying to change the storyline of the Bundesliga with two wins against Bayern to start our season. And we're keeping the winning going up to our first Champions League fixture against Benfica. We got them, Real Betis, and Celtic in our group. Much easier than last year, in my opinion. But Benfica have a great squad. I really like some of their nostalgia transfers, like bringing back Angel Di Maria. They've also got high potential players like Ba and Neres, who are their key talents at the club. We are at home for this Champions League fixture. And if we can find a way to start off our campaign with three points, that should give us good odds of advancing to the knockout stages and back-to-back -back seasons. It's Malin to start off the highlights, dribbling around a few Benfica players and finding Julian Brandt in the middle. He's in the form of his life right now, creating goals, whether that's through scoring them or providing assists. Really happy to see that uh, because I don't think anyone can deny the potential he had when Dortmund signed him from Leverkusen. It took a few years for him to find that great form on a consistent basis, but now that he's found it, I think it's going to be a great few seasons ahead for him. And this was a high scoring match. Benfica found the leveler, but we soon afterwards took the lead once again, courtesy of Mukoko, who I decided to start in this one. I wanted him to get more minutes and we made it clear from the start that we value him here at Dortmund because there is plenty of interest from other clubs to secure his signature. What a goal that is from Angel Di Maria. Cannot let him get a shot off on his left foot because he can pull off some incredible efforts just like that one. 
We're closing towards the end of this match, and Don't Freeze will play through Adeyemi, who plays the ball in the middle to Marco Royce. Although he has a lesser squad role now, that doesn't mean he can't step up on big occasions. The go-ahead goal will give us all three points in this one, and we've made a statement defeating arguably the toughest opponent in our group. A month full of victories in September was enough to secure us a Manager of the Month award. But it wasn't all good news, with Adeyemi in great form but suffering a broken rib injury. Injury, leaving him out for three months. So as we head into the January transfer window, our lead at the top of the table is in jeopardy. In the Champions League, we did enough to secure a first place finish. Little to my surprise, it's us and Benfica to advance to the knockout rounds where we will play Lazio. I've made some changes to our starting 11, specifically moving Malin over to the left wing position, which frees up the right wing spot and Gio Reyna can finally see some minutes after struggling to get into the first team for Dortmund. It's going to be a tough ass though with Adiemi equal with Fulkrug for the most goals at the club. We are still winning games though, closing out January with some victories and mostly wins going into our first Champions League knockout stage fixture against Lazio. Great timing with Adiemi returning from his injury, but that didn't stop Lazio from winning their home fixture 3-2. It means we'll need to mount a comeback at home. Not an easy ask considering the transfers that Lazio have made. They're undefeated in their last five and we'll need to look to change that. Fortunately, we've got some players in great form right now. It's Fulkrug that gets a lot of the attention going into this match. Four goals from his last three and we'll need a few more in this one. We'll start the highlights with Mecha playing through Adiemi, fighting through the challenge, and already showing the impact he makes on this Dortmund squad. Although it's Broad that's credited with the assist, I think it's Adiemi that did the most in the build-up to this one. We're into the second half now, and Mecha playing through Adiemi. He's going to somehow get this shot off and find the back of the net. Just an incredible display here. Defenders all around him, but he will still finish that on his preferred left foot to give us the lead on aggregate and also on the day. Mecha really proving to be a creative midfield and a decent enough replacement for Jude Bellingham. Sure, he's not going to have the same rating and potential, but you can see from the highlights what sort of impact he has on us as we will be coasting through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League with Adiemi still in the form of his life. Our next opponent in the knockout stages is PSG. I've seen so many matchups against them in my rebuild so far. And they proved to be a tough opponent on simulations, winning the first like 2 0. We get two goals in the first 90 minutes to force extra time, but it's Marquinhos that ends up getting the deciding goal in the 99th minute to see PSD through to the semifinals. Although we're out of the Champions League, we saw a decent comeback there and Heading into our second to last Bundesliga matchup, we have an opportunity to secure the Bundesliga title. It's either us or Leipzig to end Bayern's streak of consecutive league titles. Even more important as Mats Hummels will be retiring at the end of the season along with longtime Dortmund player Marco Royce. If there's one more thing we can do for his career, that's to give him a league title with his boyhood club Dortmund that he remained loyal to despite plenty of interest from other clubs around the world. Even though Dortmund have brought out some quality sides over the years, they have struggled at times to close out their season. Fortunately, we haven't left things to the final match day to secure the league title. We can still drop points here and have a chance at winning the league, but I would love to do it at home in front of our fans and do this in a proper fashion. Mecha continuing his goal scoring ability as he will open up the scoring 18 minutes in, dribbling by some players, and I think he could be a dormant talent for the future. Ben Sabani is quietly becoming a key player in our attack as a lot of these goals start via his buildup. He finds players in front of him, but he's the one dribbling the ball into the final third. It was Julia Brat to score the goal off the rebound from Fulkrug, and we were not looking to stop there. Ben Sabani once again finding matchup, playing to Ben Sabani over to Adeyemi. It's another goal for our winger as he makes things three on the day, and now is when we can make a couple of substitutions. Emery Chalant be brought off for Marco Royce so he can wear this captain's armband and should lift the trophy within the next few minutes. Mecha will add a fourth for us in the 60th minute and another opportunity for us to make more substitutions. It's Sula to be brought off for Mats Hummels. 
two legendary Dortmund players with Royce and Hummels. If you're like me and have played career mode a lot over the years, they are just so iconic for this Dortmund side. As they've gotten older, they've had to adapt their play style, but I think the quality is certainly still there. Finally, we've secured some silverware in this rebuild, a Bundesliga title as well as a German Super Cup. Four points clear of Leipzig for the top spot in the league, Bayern and Hoffenheim rounding out the Champions League qualification spots. Augsburg will be competing in the promotion playoff final with Köln and Hertha Berlin dropping down to Bundesliga 2. It's our rival Schalke that will match up against next year as they won Bundesliga 2. Hanover joining them via automatic promotion and Heidenheim will fight off Augsburg in the relegation playoffs to gain promotion to the Bundesliga. It's another season where Dortmund 2 finished towards the bottom end of the Dritte Liga standings but it's Leipzig that win the Pokal, a disappointing season for Bayern. Arsenal defeating Leverkusen in the UEFA Super Cup. Real Madrid get the win against Milan in the Champions League. Porto defeat Sociedad in the Europa League, and it's Newcastle to win against Ajax in the Conference League. Fulkrug stays as the top goal scorer at Dortmund, 26 from 40, and it was enough to make him the Bundesliga top scorer. Adiemi also creeping into the top 15 at the 14th place spot. Julian Brandt breaking into double digit assists for the club, 10 from 42. He was tied with Kevin Voland and Adam Holcek for the third most assists in the league. Gia Reyna also making a mark with six Bundesliga assists from 10 appearances. And a great season from Kobel, second most clean sheets in the league. Some exciting updates for Durenville going up plus eight in his rating to a 79 overall, a plus six for Bino Gittens. And slow and steady growth for Mokoko, up plus two to an 82 overall. Still a few players out on loan. Mason Wright might have helped Heidenheim in their promotion winning campaign, up plus six in his overall to a 70 rating. Declan Collins, double digit growth here, plus 13 to a 73 overall. Oliver Graf, up plus 7 to a 72. And Mirai, up plus 2 to a 75. We found some excellent youth academy prospects. Patrick Schaefer is a 65 rated center forward from Germany, 91 to 94 potential but we're slowly starting to make him a center attacking mid. Leonardo Araujo is 61 rated left back from Brazil, 93 to 94 potential. And Bartek Bjonk, a right back from Poland who has 83 to 94 potential and a 60 rating. We finally checked off a league title for Dortmund. Now our aspirations are on the Champions League. Some changes ahead to our squad specifically as we look to build upon our board objectives. We can expect similar things as we look to repeat as Bundesliga winners, win the DFA Pokal, and also win the Champions League. It's all on the line as we have 220 million remaining in our transfer budget. The first offer though, coming from two huge clubs, over 100 million for each of these offers for Adeyemi. It's always tough for me to gauge when I should be letting these players go, regardless of how important they are to our starting 11. I accepted both offers for 125 million, and it was Chelsea that fortunately completed the deal first. Gio Reyna also fed up of his lack of minutes despite his great assist outputs. And it was Newcastle that paid a big 75 million fee to see him join. Also kind of a fun transfer because Giorena was actually born in Sunderland. Marcel Sabitzer with one of the more interesting careers joining Bayern after leaving the club just a few years ago. Marius Wolf was an early starter in this Dortmund save, but he's off to RB Leipzig for 17.5 million. But this is one of the transfers I was anticipating in this rebuild. There have been some transfer links between Jane Sancho and Borussia Dortmund, primarily on a loan basis, but who knows, could even happen on a permanent transfer. When you look back at his statistics with Dortmund, they were just incredible. His 2018-19 season saw 12 goals and 18 assists. His 2019-2020 season was even better with 17 goals and 17 assists. During his last year with Dortmund in 2020-2021, he had 8 goals and 12 assists. All in all, his link up with Erling Haaland was just unstoppable to play against. And I'm hoping he can build upon his performances with Manchester United so far. I know he's not a part of their starting 11 right now, but I think that can change in the future. Honestly, I'm shocked that he was able to join us on just a 50 million fee. 
well below his valuation of 67.5 million, but quite realistic given the current circumstances. Dortmund don't typically spend too much on transfers. Their most expensive arrival to date came in 2016 when Usman Dembele left Stad Rene for 35 million euros. So when looking for squad depth in the midfield, there may have been better and higher rated players, but I thought it would be quite realistic for Enzo Loadise to join us. He's been one of my favorite signings in career mode for a while with a real face scan. And due to the fact that he was still at Las Palmas, I was fine with paying his 68 million release clause to see him leave Spain and join us at Dortmund. The midfielder with experience in France, Spain, and England will also hopefully have a bright future in Germany. Speaking of a bright future, we're looking to add another high potential player with Leandro Morgala. He was one of the top Road to Glory signings in the Bundesliga last season with career mode leaving 1860 Munich and joining RB Salzburg in last summer's transfer window. Of course, Dortmund and Salzburg have a good amount of transfer history with Erling Haaland and more recently Kareem Adeyemi really developing their potential at Dortmund. This will be a 5 million arrival, definitely a player for the future and might make the occasional appearance for us. We did manage to have him join for less than his valuation and he's got an exciting prospect status. I want to make sure we have a capable backup goalkeeper just in case the situation arises. And fortunately, Stefan Ortega was available as a free agent. He's got a pretty lengthy history in the Bundesliga with Arminia Bielefeld and also some time with 1860 Munich. I did have some ideas to bring in a Dortmund 2 player, but the reality is they aren't high enough in their overall rating and the highest potential talent with Prince Anning actually left to Mallorca. So I just wanted to give you an update on the regens for Marco Royce. His name is Christoph Schultz and he's playing over in Argentina. 70 rated and he's got great potential. Micah Zimmermann is the regen of Mats Hummels, also seems to have spawned as a free agent and has joined Hetafe, where he sits at a 70 rating, also showing great potential. Another German Super Cup to begin our season, this time up against RB Leipzig. Our starting 11, despite the departures, is looking strong and capable of competing in the Bundesliga and Champions League. I wasn't sure what was going on with Mecha. He seemed to have like a stamina bug. I don't think he was coming back from any sort of injury. Although we've technically got a higher rated option at the striker position, I couldn't bench Phil Krug as the Bundesliga top goal scorer. But this is actually the first time we're playing against RB Leipzig. Definitely one of the top teams in the Bundesliga. They play a similar play style to us, so we'll see which team comes out on top. The plan is to just continue our momentum that we had towards the end of last season, of course. Back-to-back -back Bundesliga titles would be fantastic but my ambition is trophies specifically for the Champions League. I want to show that we can get the job done against some of the best teams in the world. I was very surprised to see that effort from Allen was called for onside. I thought he was offside judging by the camera angle, but upon looking back, he was in line with the center back. And unfortunately, he couldn't convert that effort because it was RB Leipzig that take the lead early on. I think that's Andre Silva that opens up the scoring for them. And they were all over us on the counter-attack. They have some quick build-up play and some fantastic players like Donny Omo. Fortunately, Kobel is one of the world's best goalkeepers, showcasing his quick reaction times to deny the effort and keep this match close as we approach the halftime break. It's one more chance for Leipzig. Baumgartner play through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. We do well to slow down their effort. Niklas Sula putting in a block and we can go into the break and readjust. It's going to be a debut for Loadise, being brought on for the lower stamina and fatigue Mecha. And right away, we're going to see some sort of impact as we get a chance on target. And Jane Sancho, in his debut back at Dortmund, will get the follow-up effort and find the back of the net. Maybe not the prettiest goal, but the important thing is that we've tied up the match and we can still find the winner here as we bring on Muokoko for the last 30 minutes or so. It's Ben Sabani once again who gets inside the box, trying to find some space, find Sancho, playing the ball to Bronze, and over to Muokoko. That's a 2-1 lead, and we might have our striker for the season. 
I know Fulkrug has been a consistent goal scorer, but we need to think about overall ratings as well. And clearly he has a knack for scoring goals because he did enough to help us win back-to-back -back Super Cups. It's a new era at Dortmund without Marco Royce and Mats Hummels, but one thing remains the same, and that's our ambition to win trophies. Not an ideal start to the season as we lost our Bundesliga opener, but our first Champions League fixture is against Barcelona. Another tough group with Barca, Sporting, and CFR Cluj. Bad news as well with Nicolas Sula picking up a five-month broken tailbone injury. That'll leave him out well into the second half of the season. In. It's a good thing we have Bella Kochup available off the bench, the 77 rating at the right center back position. Barca not too busy with transfers actually. They've made a couple in defense and the former Dortmund talisman Lewandowski still holding it down at the striker spot. It'll be Tiki Taka play style versus Gagan pressing. We'll see how we open up our Champions League group stage. Our form during the group stage of Champions League has been pretty strong, finishing top of our group in both seasons so far. It's just the knockout state is where we've struggled, but Barcelona, tough opponent, arguably the toughest side that we've played yet for simulated fixtures. That didn't stop Mukoko from scoring another goal. He is truly finding his form a couple of seasons in, and I think that will hopefully be what happens for him at Dortmund. I don't know how much longer he's willing to wait in front of strikers that are getting minutes right now. The one thing he has on his side is youth with other dormant strikers being a bit older. But Marcus Rashford being brought on as a substitute, not sure why he's not starting ahead of Lewandowski because right away he will score a goal for Barca. To get the equalizer, I am more than happy to share points here. We don't need to win every single fixture. We just need to slowly add on points. The injury bug seems to have hit us here at Dortmund as now Kobel is out for two months with a dislocated shoulder. It's a good thing we made a backup goalkeeper signing because we'll enter the January transfer window in a all right spot, still in contention for the title. Bayern nine points ahead of us. But I think that injury to Kobo definitely impacted our form towards the end of Champions League action, but we still did it enough to advance to the knockout stages. Our opponent in the round of 16 is Arsenal, and that'll be a good one for sure. But here's how the team looks. We're definitely struggling in defense with Ortega and Bella Kochup holding it down. Kobel back within the next two weeks, so that should be addressed pretty soon. Sula's out for at least another month, and he's actually gone down two in his ratings. So I'm going to make an additional signing here in January. Not something I do often for these rebuilds. But Isaac Heen has consistently been rated one of the best center backs in Serie A. There was plenty of interest for Atalanta to sign him from Hellas Verona. That deal fell through though, so I'll be closely monitoring him to see which club he joins within the next few years. He should also have a real face scan added in FC24. There have been a couple of problems with that rollout being added. Good deal though for squad depth as he joins on a 25 million transfer, a little bit above his valuation of 22.5 million. Just a few weeks later, we're ready to get into Champions League action and a fully healthy squad, both Kobel and Sula back in the starting 11. And we'll start off this round of 16 fixture against Arsenal with a victory at home, three to two. And at the Emirates, we'll win at three to one to put us through to the quarterfinals against Chelsea. Of course, the big player at this club is the one that left us at the start of the season. Kareem Adeyemi up to an 87 rating. However, Jane Sancho will be the only player to score a goal at Stamford Bridge. That is the starting 11 we'll match up against at home. Plenty of transfers in this Chelsea side. The key players to watch out for are Banez and Christopher Nkunku. Mukoko is in good form. He scored two goals in this previous match, and I'm hoping that he can get a couple more in this one. It was not too long ago that Borussia Dortmund played Chelsea in the Champions League. It was Kareem Adeyemi to actually score a goal in the first leg, but Chelsea came roaring back, winning 2-1 on aggregate last season. So it kind of is a very similar storyline here. But in this match, we will get the first goal with Mecha continuing his play to drive the ball into the box. And that time, he just finessed the effort around the goalkeeper. Adiemi answering back. He knows the weaknesses in this Dortmund team. And because our right side is a little bit more attacking minded, he is making the most of that, finding some space. And now Nkunku will get a goal. So two former Bundesliga players scoring against us to find this match level on aggregate. The ball bouncing around as it's played through. And Mokoko does well 
and has enough pace to outrun these Chelsea defenders. He's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and he's got the finishing ability to give us once again the lead on aggregate with just 13 minutes left to play. It's going to be a swift response as here Troy to plays through Caicedo over to Adiemi, 1-1 with the goalkeeper and he beats Kobel on his near post. We're level once more on aggregate with just a few minutes left in this one. I was fully expecting the match to go into extra time, but we're past the four a lot of minutes, and this is just super unlucky. The ball rebounds straight to Nico Gonzalez, and in probably the most unlucky fashion I've seen so far in a spectator fixture, we will be losing on aggregates with Chelsea through to the Champions League semifinals, mostly courtesy of Karim Adeyemi. I can recall plenty of occasions where Dortmund were unlucky, but as we close out this season, I was really looking forward to at least highlighting one fixture against Schalke. Even as we make a title charge, we're just four points behind Leverkusen for the top spots. But with our manager rating at 39, we need to pretty much win every single match. And of course, we lose our next fixture against Mainz, who crushed Dortmund's title dreams last season on the final match day. That was enough from the board to terminate our contract. The only club willing to give us a job offer was Heidenheim. At the time of the offer, they sat 17th, so it was just a job to try to keep them from getting relegated. We couldn't quite do that as Heidenheim and Hanover dropped down to Bundesliga 2. Schalke competing in the promotion playoff final, and for the Bundesliga top spots, it's Leverkusen that win the league. Bayern, Leipzig, and Wolfsburg will round out the top four, so Dortmund didn't achieve much by sacking us as manager. In Bundesliga 2, Köln and Augsburg will see promotion, with Hamburg defeating Schalke, our rivals, to finally get promoted back to the Bundesliga. This is probably the worst display so far from Dortmund 2, finishing 19th in the Dritte Liga. Leverkusen with a really good year, winning the Pokal to add to their league title. Real Madrid defeating Porto in the UEFA Super Cup. Bayern defeat Chelsea in the Champions League final. Manchester City get the win against Sociedad in the Europa League. And Salzburg defeats Spurs in the Conference League final. These stats were recorded just before me getting sacked. Mokoko did well with his opportunities. 24 from 43 Bundesliga appearances. He didn't quite win the Bundesliga Golden Boot Award, finishing with the third most goals. Daniel Malin breaking into double-digit assists. And he was tied for the second most assists in the league. I know Kovo was injured for quite a few matches, and he had an alright season. Seventh most clean sheets in the league. Jane Sancho, currently the top valued player at the club, so nice to see that his career has had a resurgence. And for loan updates, Mason Wright up plus three to a 73 overall, Araujo up plus nine to a 70 rating. Collins might be our best talent, up plus three to a 76 overall, Groff up plus four to a 76 overall, Schaefer up plus eight to a 73 rating. Bonk is still sitting in our youth academy at a 62 overall and great potential. Marco Royce's regen is at a 71 overall with Mats Hummel's regen also at a 71 rating.